What's going on, y'all? So, real quick, yo, um, I'm out in Asheville, North Carolina. Um, out here to um, do an ayahuasca ceremony. For those of y'all don't know about it, go do your research, find out about it, or whatever. Um, I'm not really scared or fearful, a little anxious or whatever, but um, I figure I'm gonna document the experience uh, for people who are interested in this or people who are interested in going down the path themselves. Um, the reason why I'm doing it is because I want to uh, dig deeper into myself and be able to pull out the best of myself out of that. Um, I have some childhood trauma and some other stuff that I feel like I need to deal with. So that's my reasoning for uh, doing the ceremony. Um, and there's some family members as well that I want to uh, have them go down the experience because um, some of my family members also have uh, trauma or addictions and things like that. So. I figured I'd be the first one to go through it before everybody else does. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna keep y'all updated on the, uh, what's going on with the cabin, um, the whole uh, what I'm what I'm feeling and thinking about this experience. And uh, shit, I'll get back to y'all. Peace. All right, so my shaman just uh, showed up to the cabin. He's setting everything up. Um, I guess we're gonna get started in a few minutes. Um, so I guess in the middle of it, I'm gonna do some more documentation. I'm gonna document. Uh, what I'm thinking and what I'm feeling as well afterwards. Um, <sighs> Peace, y'all. I got this. How y'all doing? Uh, my name is Dennis Thesis Williams, and uh, this is the uh, post um, ayahuasca ceremony uh, video. Um, I should have did this video a while ago. Uh, we actually did the initial ceremony on December 5th and December 6th of 2020. Um, so it's uh, actually Christmas 2020. Um, I wasn't going to do the video because I felt like um, I felt like after doing the ceremony that the experience and the information that I got was for me and I didn't want to put it out there in a way to where um, people would think that um, if they were to go down that path that they would have the same experience that I have. And um, from watching the videos and doing uh, research on um, on YouTube, I saw that a lot of people had different experiences, um, but uh, we'll get into that a little bit. All right, so I want to talk about the first day. I said that um, the ceremony was a two-day ceremony. All right, so the first day we went straight in. Um, we we did um, a small dose um, of ayahuasca just to make sure that I didn't have any allergic reactions to it. So we waited about 30, 30 to 45 minutes, and then we decided to go with um, a full shot. And um, that's how each dose was. It was like a shot. So um, after I took the first shot, um, you know, we were, me and the shaman were just having casual conversation and, um, you just start to become like really mellow and, um, you start to become kind of relaxed, but then, um, kind of anxious at the same time because you still don't know like what, what to expect. So as time went by, like 15 minutes, every 10 minutes, uh, every 10 minute increment or something like that, five to 10 minute increment, I would say, um, I started to get more like, um, not really like a, like drowsy or sleepy, but I started to feel heavy and, um, I got to where I was holding, um, my hands, like my head like this. And then you, you go from talking and, you know, just kind of feeling what you're feeling. Then you go to where you have your, your, your head on the table. 
So then it goes to where like you just you just feel like you just got to lay your head on the table, uh, you know, kind of like this. So I'm, I'm still like this and I'm still talking. He's making sure we cool, whatever. So then after that, um, I start to feel like I need to lay down. So then um, I go um, into um, the room that he, that he has set up, like I showed you before. Um, I pretty much uh, I lay down for some reason. I got like really cold. I don't know if it's because we um, did the ceremony um, in the uh, Mount Appalach Appalachian Mountains in uh, North Carolina. Uh, what was it? Uh, Lake Lore. Yeah, that's where we were at. So it, it was it was already cold, but um, I don't know if it had anything to do with ayahuasca um, um, making me want to lay down. So that's what I did. I lay down, I, I covered up, um, you know, so I could try to get warm. All right. So. All right. So once I lay down, I start getting into the vibe of just how everything is set up, like with the wall tap tapestries, um, the lighting, all the lights were like um, a fuchsia or a purple or um, a pink color. Um, uh, there were um, other like little statues um, that were put out. Um, of course, like um, the sage and Apollo Santo sticks were being burned. And then there was um, there was music that was being played, like Native American flutes and drums, but it was like really chill. Um, so I just started like getting into like the artwork and the tapestry and whatnot. And then like, like over time, like, you know, things in the tapestry would like pop out to me. I would say pop out. I wouldn't necessarily say move, started moving or glowing or whatever. I would say certain things would just like pop out to me. Um, at the while, I, I think I ended up closing my eyes and... I feel like that's when um, you, we started to scrape the surface where um, it, it felt like a presence was uh, examining me and um, the presence felt like um, definitely female, um, almost um, a reptilian type of presence. Uh, when I tried to like, like look at it, like I guess with my inner eye, because my eyes are closed. When I tried to look at it, um, it was like I was looking at the torso. And it was like um, scales, but the scales were like moving, like in different directions, like each row of scales, were like moving, like in a different sequence or direction. And on the scales was like um, it was like um, like electric signs and symbols and, uh, you know, things like that. So it was like hard to like really, really catch it. But um, I could see um, instances of an eye or instances of, of, of a lip or, you know, lips or something like that. Um, now the, the first night I can't really remember, um, you know, what, what I was taught or whatever. I don't know if it was like preparation, um, for the, for the second ceremony. Um, I'm sorry if I'm not giving you like these crazy in-depth stories about, you know, seeing aliens and, um, you know, uh, dimensions or whatnot that that was not my experience. You know what? Now, now that I'm thinking about it, I do remember. The first night was um was it was as if I was uh to face my ego. I I was look to face um the things about myself that I didn't like or the things that I needed to focus on. Um for me, I think uh one of the things I might have had issues with with some people um might find surprising that really know me was uh self esteem, confidence, um a confusion of about like um you know, what being a man, like what truly is. So, um, and I think we might've dealt with, uh, some childhood trauma. Um, you know, my mother was murdered when I was 16 years old. So I had a lot of dreams where, um, I would be in the house. Um, the house that, the, the house that I had the most memorable moments with my mother and the house would be like all, um, It'd be all torn up. I would be in my room. Most, most of the time I would be in my room. Um, outside the house, there would be like some type of natural disaster or, or, uh, war or something going on. But inside the house, um, I would be in my room and the room would just be closed everywhere and just, it'd just be really fucked up. And, um, the way my mother was, she was very, uh, neat and orderly. So there would be no way that we would keep the house like that. But anyway, I had as a, as a grown man, like this happened to me when I was 16. I'm 41 years old. I've been having these dreams for over a decade. Um, the same dreams about uh, some type of natural disaster linked to, to this home. You know what I mean? So for me, she told me um, 
that um, the reason why I was having those dreams was because um, there was a lot of childhood trauma that I, I experienced in, the, in that house that I had buried. So I had like this, 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 this really, this release where like I cried like harder than I ever cried um, before in my life, I believe. Um, and it was like, I was able to like, let it go. And she also told me that um, the women in my life, um, I'm trying to save them because I always felt like I couldn't save that I couldn't save my mom or that I could have saved my mom. Um, she also uh, showed me all my immediate loved ones. Like she would show me like uh, their face or, or them moving. And um, she would show me like whatever issue or disconnect that I had with each member and um, pretty much told me how I could use math and creative energy to be able to solve um, those issues. Like all, all, most of the things in my experience, um, that I had with, um, with the ayahuasca was, um, it was, it was like, she was giving me keys, um, to all the issues that I, I had in my life to be able to unlock these doors so I can be able to, um, truly experience what, what happiness is and not, not just success, because I feel like success is like a byproduct of happiness and everybody's idea of success is different. All right, so one of the keys that she gave me that I think could help uh, people was um, after she showed me um, showed me my ego, um, she told me I definitely had to put my ego in check. I had to always be aware that the voice that I had in my head or the conversations that I have um, are not always my voice. Like your ego would disguise um, your voice. Its voice is your voice. And, you, and some of the thoughts that you have, you think they're your thoughts. Um, so you definitely, um, know that it's the ego if it's like, a, it's like negative or if, um, the thought is based in fear. So she told me like, definitely keep my ego in check, which will help me keep my mouth in check because she said that, um, my mouth, um, is, uh, is like my tongue is sharp, you know what I'm saying? And if I don't be careful about how I speak that I can end up offending or hurting a lot of people. Um, so she definitely told me that truth without compassion is, um, is abuse. Another thing that I learned in my experience, um, she taught me that, um, like heaven and hell, heaven or hell, um, not outside of what they teach in the Bible. I'm not talking about, I'm, I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about like a state of being heaven or hell, a state of being. So she told me that state of being is first a choice. Like you have to proclaim that, um, you um, you are living, you, you experience heaven on earth. And then you have to say that you are heaven on earth. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, I had this ayahuasca experience, uh, maybe about three weeks ago and every day, every day, I'm not going to say has been like crazy jump for joy or whatever, but I'm telling you like every day has been a good day. Um, just business wise or my uh, relationships with my family members, um, how I deal with my, um, uh, my clients and my, um, uh, in, in the industry that I work in, um, then the brands, the new brand that I'm, that I've created, is just moving in, in a crazy way that, I mean, it's moving fast, but not fat so fast that I can't, I can't grasp it or I can't keep, keep control of it. Um, uh, she also taught me how to make decisions. Like, um, you know, as a young black man growing up in America, um, you know, I wasn't taught how to uh, properly make decisions, but through through this ayahuasca, I realized like in school, like the reason why they harp on math so much, because um, things like geometry, trigonometry, calculus, just math in general, is just um, how, how you make decisions or how you could build something. Um, so what I learned was that when you make any decision, you're either going to add, subtract, divide or multiply from um, your happiness or, or or your sadness. That's pretty much it. So anytime you make a, um, a decision, it's mathematical. So that means that there should be no emotion involved in it um, unless you're going off like gut feeling. You know what I mean? So when you make a decision, it's you're going to um, add, subtract, divide, or multiply, and you got to keep your emotions out of it. So another thing that I learned that's also connected to math and mastering um, life or, you know, getting yourself to success is that uh, everybody has to have a routine. You know what I mean? And a routine is math. Like, say you work out, you're going to do um, a certain amount of reps and sets on a certain amount of days. Like all of this is math. So um, everybody needs a routine, especially men. So 
like um like working out like every man should work out i'm not saying that you should go out and be a bodybuilder or anything like that what i'm saying is that um like math is masculine you know what i'm saying um so you should put in that math keep putting in that math you know putting those deposits in um so you can get to a more alpha state um and i'm not talking about um math, like toxic toxic masculine um energy or anything like that i'm just talking about um being man and um men need to have a routine um yeah, i think there's one more thing i want to add to that uh oh yeah and um everybody needs personal rules what i learned is that um difference between winners winners and losers is that losers don't have any rules winners always have rules like some set of rules and morals or, or or schedule or they have some type of routine they have rules so if you want to win you have to have some type of personal rules another thing that um she taught was that um all right so I'm, I'm just, I'll, I'll communicate like this. Like, in my experience, I feel like it's hard to uh, correct um, a black woman, right? So, you know, people might say like, man, you can't tell black woman shit. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I was shown that because um, men are not supposed to, I'm supposed to tell, like, not supposed to tell you anything. Like, we're supposed to show it. You know what I mean? We're supposed to show and prove. So, like. If you if you would if you if you were a lady right and you feel like well um, she's not taking care of herself um, or giving herself um, self attention or self maintenance like she did in the beginning um, then maybe you should show her what it's supposed to look like because you're supposed to lead a man is supposed to lead so um, what I also learned is that in all relationships whether it's a romantic relationship or a family relationship or an associate or friends that all of these people are a reflection of yourself. So whatever you, whatever you or your ego is having you focus on these individuals, those things that you don't like, what you're seeing is what you don't like in yourself. So she definitely uh, showed me that. It's like um, everything that goes on in your life, like you responsible, you like it's your fault. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's good or good or bad. All right. So um, I, I'm gonna end this because um. There's a lot of stuff I don't remember. I wrote things down so I, I couldn't remember. Um, I didn't want to. Um, I didn't want to forget these keys, like the, these keys that um, were going to lead me to my happiness. Now, there was a lot of other things that on um, my experience that I, I don't necessarily want to talk about because I don't think people really understand or get it. Um, I think those things were definitely for me. I'm just going to give you. Um, like I said, the, these keys that I feel like other people uh, know, definitely some people in these uh, these like societies and whatnot, they definitely know some of these keys. And I feel like um, achieving like true, true happiness or having heaven on, on earth is an easy solution. I feel like all problems have an easy ass solution. People were having these visual um, experiences. So I, I really wanted to try to see um, some of these things that other people had saw. And um, she told me that if, if she was to show me those things, that it would play to my ego and I wouldn't get the lessons. I would be too into the on of what this other shit that, I, that I'm wanting to see, which is not why I'm there for what I want. It's for what I'm supposed to be there for what I need, not for what I want. So um, anyway, I tried to see her face. She wouldn't really show. She wouldn't show me her face. Um, when I asked to see her face, um, she showed me every woman's face that was important to me in my life. And then um, we had this conversation where I was saying that, I'm, you know, I like, I'm into getting tattoos. So I wanted to get the name um, Aya tattooed on me. And um, she said that wasn't her name. So I asked her what her name was. And every name that she said was every woman in my life that was important to me. So I thought that, that was um, really deep. Like every question that I asked, it was like this this simple but deep response so it just made me more aware of um it just i feel like it brought me to a, a higher level of consciousness um than i already had like i can i can break down uh problems and issues and intent so fast um and i feel like um my level of creativity has gotten better too i'm a tattoo artist um by trade um, I'm, I'm also a painter. Um, I design jewelry. Um, I do a whole bunch of things, body paint. Um, I design clothes, 
footwear, but just um, the level of creativity and focus that I have on those things has gotten better. And um, I just, my outlook, my outlook on life in general is, is a lot better. Um, I feel like I'm the shit, you know what I'm saying? I am the shit. Um, I feel like everything that I, that I want and desire, I deserve, um, as long as it doesn't trade on anybody else. And, uh, I feel like I definitely got my ego in check. Sometimes, um, there's some slips. Um, my decision making has gotten better. Um, uh, just day to day, every day is, it's feel, seem like it's gotten better. Um, uh, and, and my routine, like, um, I, I'm not really looking for results with, with my routine as far as like, uh, working out, having a morning routine, like maybe sage meditation, um, uh, you know, listen to some chill music before you go into any other type of music. Um, you know, maybe trying to like set the day with um, positive intent, things like that. Um, anyway, with that being said, that's, that's my video. Um, that's my experience. Um, yo, I did this video because when I did, when I was looking like through the YouTube videos, there wasn't a lot of people that looked and sound like me that had experience with this. So I hope that, um, this, help somebody that's thinking about going down this path, maybe to help them want to go down it. Um, if, if you ask me what I, what I say, is this for everyone? Um, no, it's not for, I wouldn't say no, it's not for everyone, but, um, people that's already researching and looking into it, I feel like there's a reason why that's happening. So I would say definitely, um, if you have the opportunity, um, to go down that, that path, I definitely would because, um, you know, I was a little fearful and anxious before I went in it, but I knew at the end of the day that I was going to come out um, a better person, a better man, and it was going to be a better benefit for my family, my friends, and my business. Uh, so, that you know, that's why I did it. Um, I hope y'all appreciate this. One.